Hello, and welcome to this, the first minuscule rendered video. I'll be showing you how to make your very own 3D jersey mockup just like this one here. In order to create the mockup, we'll be using a combination of Blender and Photoshop, as well as a particular model that you can obtain from the TurboSquid website. Now, it should be noted that this particular tutorial is made for those beginner to intermediate Blender users as a quick and dirty way to make a mockup. Other more experienced users may find some of the information quite obvious, but hopefully there's something there for everyone. I'd love to hear any feedback anyone may have as well, so let's get into it. In this instance, I've downloaded this Polo model from TurboSquid, as I said. However, this process can really be applied to any 3D asset. There are far better models that could potentially cost more, as well as those that cost less but may be slightly lacking in the quality department. It's really up to you and how much you may be comfortable paying. So once we've parted with our hard-earned money, we can begin downloading the wavefront file. Now that we have our model, we can open it up in Blender and take a look at the UV map. So let's go up to the File tab and select Import, Wavefront File, and select our model. You'll notice we have a slight issue. The object is far too large. If you click the full stop or period key, you can zoom straight to the selected object. What's happened here is that the model is far too large as I said before. So by pressing the N key, we can bring up the view settings and adjust the clip end setting. We can change this back later if we need to. Now we scale down the model using S and bring it down roughly to the size of the default cube, which I believe is about a meter tall. Unfortunately, at this point, we have to get rid of our cube. Let's move on to the UV editing tab at, up at the top, ensuring that we have our model selected. What we see here is the basic layout of the model's UV map. Now this is where it pays off to have a more expensive model. The UV maps are generally much more well laid out, which makes texturing the model much easier. But I still want to make this more optimized for the design phase later on. So let's start selecting the various parts of the UV map and readjusting them. In this instance, I know I want a symmetrical sleeve design, so I'll overlap the sleeves. Make sure to horizontally invert the one you're moving. You can do that by selecting the S and then X for the X axis, and then lastly, click negative one to flip it. Then carefully lay it over the other sleeve. Be as precise as you want. You can always readjust this later if you wish. From that point, try to spread out the various parts you want, and once you're satisfied, we can head up to the UV tab and select export UV layout. That will save it as a PNG file. Now we can move on to the jersey design. In this section, feel free to diverge from the tutorial and let your creative side go nuts. I'll be using Photoshop, but I'm sure any image editing software works just as well. I'm a huge fan of Red Bull's marketing and logo design, so I'll be sucking up to them today. The main objective here is to place all your logos and colors on the areas of the mesh where you want them to appear. There's no need to be too accurate here. As long as you covered the relevant areas well enough, you should be fine. Lastly, as an added bonus, I'll create a separate layer where I want the jersey to be a little more glossy. I'll make all the areas I want glossy black and leave the rest white. With that done, make sure you disable the mesh layer and save two new image files separately. Name the first one main design and the second glossy design, or any name that you'll remember. Once you're back in Blender, head over to the shading tab. Create a new material and name it something that you might eventually forget, or something like main design. Add an image texture. Load up the main design we saved. Because it's the exact same size as the previous UV map, everything should line up perfectly. Take a moment to appreciate all that hard work. At this point, if you aren't happy with the design, you can go back into Photoshop and adjust it to your liking. If you are happy, we can then add another image texture and load up the glossy design we made. Connect that to a color ramp and change the black to a light gray since black is absolute gloss. If you're happy with that, we can then move on to creating a decent background. Now we can set up our stage. So first, add a plane. Go into edit mode and add an edge loop and extrude that upwards. Select the corner edge and bevel that using Ctrl B. Scroll up or down on the mouse to add more edges as you please. Shade the plane smooth and make sure to tick Auto Smooth checkbox under the Normals tab. Create a new material under the Shading tab and name it Floor or Wall or anything you like. Change the color to black and turn the roughness all the way up. We don't want any reflections there. 
While we're at it, we can turn down the specular a little as well. Grab the camera and find a good angle. You can press Ctrl Alt 0 to set your preferred view to the camera's view. Now we can add some area lights. I tend to place them on the right, front and back at an angle, but feel free to improvise this part to your liking as well. Lastly, we're going to go to the World Properties tab and change the color all the way down to black as well. Move to the Render Properties tab and adjust the engine to Cycles. If your computer has the ability to, select GPU Compute. From this point, you can refine the render further by going into denoising and adaptive sampling. But for the purpose of keeping this as short as possible, we can leave it there. Go up to the Render tab and click on Render Image. And there we have it, a render of your very own jersey design.